Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Mosasaurus. During the Cretaceous period, which spanned about 145 and a half to 65 and a half million years ago, there was this genus of reptiles called Mosasauruses. These things were absolutely huge aquatic reptiles that roamed throughout the waterways here on Earth. Because of their size, they became apex predators during this time and have been estimated to have grown to about 56 feet. At the time of their existence, it isn't exactly likely that they would have encountered any sharks that are alarmingly large like the Megalodon was, but I mean, the Cretaceous period certainly had some other massive creatures that put up some stiff competition. This is of course, like I mentioned, an entire genus, so there are definitely some less threatening species in the mix, but there are some in there who would have given the Meg a run for their money should they have existed at the same time. In our ninth spot today, we have Liviatin. Now, this dude was in direct competition with the Megalodon. Megalodon. They were around 57 feet in length and weighed around 100,000 pounds. So yeah, they were pretty hefty guys. Not only that, but they had incredibly large teeth. Their teeth reached over a foot in length. This earned them the title of having the largest known biting teeth of any animal. But they died out between 3.6 and 2.6 million years ago. Just like the Meg, these creatures struggled to adapt to climate change, and they suffered losing their primary prey, which was small to medium sized whales. If this creature was still around today, I couldn't imagine what the ocean would be like. You'd never catch me swimming in it, that's for sure. In our eighth spot today, we have the giant oarfish. The oarfish is the world's longest bone fish. They can be up to 56 feet, which is 17 meters in length, and they can weigh about 600 pounds, which is 270 kilograms. They also look pretty weird. Like they look like a cross between an eel and a fish, but they have bright silvery skin with bright red spikes running down its back. Back in the 1860s, two men were gathering seaweed on the coast of Bermuda when this creature washed up on the rocks. They immediately got scared and thought it was a nasty sea serpent, so they killed it. Later, it was discovered to only be an oarfish. In our seventh spot, we have Ichthyosaur. Between 1976 and 1990, scientists unearthed the largest Ichthyosaur tooth ever found. The width of this tooth root was twice as large as any aquatic reptile known. It had a diameter of 60 millimeters, which is 2.4 inches. This makes it the thickest ichthyosaur tooth found so far. Then in 2018, paleontologists discovered a three foot jaw segment that belonged to this creature. Then they started to piece together the fossil fragments of this creature and concluded that this animal could have grown to 85 feet in size, bigger than they originally thought this creature was. Now, these creatures were interesting. They roamed the oceans about 200 million years ago and had body shapes kind of similar to dolphins. It's said that they vanished about 25 million years before the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. In our sixth spot today, we have the Shastasaurus. Now, this is the biggest known ichthyosaur. In fact, to this day, this creature is the largest marine reptile that has yet been found. Now, I say yet to be found because the oceans are massive. Massive, okay? Who knows what else is out there lurking that we haven't discovered yet? There's still so much to be discovered. Anyways, turns out that these bad boys lived in Canada. Woo, my home country. And they were about 69 feet in length or 21 meters. But some researchers have proposed that they were even bigger, and that's based on their partial fossils. So we really don't know their true size. I mean, it's said that the modern blue whale was the largest animal that ever lived, but paleontologists believe that these guys were even bigger based on their fossil records. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the whale shark. Now don't be fooled, okay? This isn't a mix between a whale and a shark. It's not a whale shark hybrid. It's not even a whale, okay? But it is a shark. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is one of the largest sharks and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 28 million years. It is said to be 65 feet in length and it weighs about 75,000 pounds. Now, when you think of sharks, you might think that they love to eat fish, you know? And that when they get a whiff of blood, they'll go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't even like that at all. In fact, they're filter feeders, meaning that they eat plankton, fish eggs, and kill decaying plants, all that kind of stuff. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, since it is a filter feeder, it has the ability to sift through over 1,500 gallons of water in an hour. 
as part of its feeding ritual. In our fourth spot today, we have Lead Sictus. The Lead Sictus lived in the oceans during the Middle Jurassic period. It was all over the place in size. It could grow anywhere from 30 feet to 100 feet. So that's a pretty drastic size difference. But to this day, it is considered the largest ray finned fish to ever swim on Earth. In fact, they were named after paleontologist Alfred Nicholson Leeds, who made important finds of the remains in 1889. Now, these dudes are pretty weird looking creatures. They look like an old whale mixed with a fish. Like, it's really strange. They also have long pectoral fins and a tall tail fin. And although they look big and bad, they mainly eat zooplankton. In our third spot today, we have Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus, whose name literally means King Lizard, lived around 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. At first, they thought it was a reptile. But after scientists studied it more, they realized that it was indeed a marine mammal. So its name is very misleading because it's actually a whale. But it's weird, like it has a long eel-like body. It also has huge rows of teeth and it chewed its food, whereas whales kind of just swallow stuff whole. It was at the top of the food chain, so it likely fed on sharks and large fish, among other marine mammals. This guy measures up to be about 49 to 66 feet in length, and that's 15 to 20 meters. In our second spot, we have the fin whale. The fin whale is said to be the second largest animal to ever live in the entire history of Earth. It was about 85 feet feet in length, which is 26 meters, and weighed about 80 tons. But even though they are massive, they are not predatory. In fact, they are totally harmless to people. They are filter feeders, so they eat like tiny krill and stuff like that. Like other whales, these had a white underside with a dark backside. They also live all around the world. They live in every ocean, except parts of the Arctic where it's just covered in ice, and they can travel great distances while munching on relatively little food. As a result, they can live for nearly 150 years. And in our number one spot today, we have the blue whales. Now it seems hard to believe, but blue whales are significantly larger than megalodons. The largest blue whale weighed about 418,000 pounds, which is more than 200 tons. Average blue whales, on the other hand, weigh a bit more than 100 tons, whereas the megalodon weighed only 50 tons. So they got nothing on the blue whales. Not only that, but even blue whale dwarfs reached 110 feet, which is 34 meters, and weighed about 200 tons. That's more than twice the size of the largest meg. Isn't that crazy? But the meg and the blue whale never met. The earliest fossils of blue whales date back to roughly 1.5 million years ago. That's about a million years after the megalodon is believed to have been around. Starting off this countdown, we have coelacanth. What's confusing about these fish isn't their name. It's the fact that everyone thought that they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then, millions of years later, they were rediscovered. These dudes have the most famous comeback story of all time. So, in the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought that they went extinct over 66 million years ago. So, it shocked scientists in 1938 when they were rediscovered off of the coast of South Africa. But they did have have some new features thanks to evolution. Now the fish has four fins that move more like limbs than fins. Theory goes that maybe they were going to become a land dwelling amphibian and then they kind of just changed their mind. I know that's not how evolution works, but it's the easiest way to describe it. So yeah, here's a creature that used to rule the world alongside dinosaurs. In our number nine spot today, we have the frilled shark. Okay, regular sharks are of course scary and powerful, but the frilled shark looks extra terrifying because it actually just looks like a full on monster. The frilled shark is a species of deep sea shark that got its name from the six to seven frilled gills it has on the sides of its snake like body. This shark can grow up to 1.8 meters or six feet long and its mouth is full of 300 razor sharp teeth. This shark was one of the first deep sea species to ever be discovered because how could you possibly miss something that looks like this? But because it makes its home so deep in the ocean, and because of the fact that it cannot withstand the pressure change when brought up closer to the surface, a lot remains a mystery about these guys. What's worse than a shark is a mysterious shark. In our number eight spot today, we have the Helicorprion. Sure. Okay, listen. 
There are many, many problems with our modern world. We could sit here talking about them all day and into next week there are so many. But here's one thing that we need to realize. Things could be so much worse, and by worse, I mean this creature could still exist. This animal existed somewhere around 250 million years ago, and while it looks more like a shark than anything else, scientists now know that it's actually a creature that is related more closely to chimeras, which are a fish that separated from the shark family about 400 hundred million years ago. So why is this animal so scary and just terrible to look at? Well, that is due to the incredibly unsettling spiral saw formation of teeth that this creature had right on their lower jaw. Yeah, an orthodontist's dream, truly. It's also not like this creature was just born with the teeth that they had for the rest of their lives. No, of course not. They had teeth that could grow and new teeth could even form. Imagine being in the ocean and you see a huge creature swim up to you that has four spiral saws for teeth. Yeah, no thanks. In our number 7 spot today we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang like teeth to grab onto their prey in their dark cold deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead slippery eel like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to an angler fish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence essence to their advantage, but they also have another less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. And secondly, they are also able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see a more blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and talented. In our number 6 spot today we have the Jacolopterus. Okay, I've got three words for you. Giant sea scorpion. Yeah, remind me to never go into prehistoric oceans. This 8 foot long arthropod lived in the water with its gross, two large pinchers and claws, and honestly it looks like something out of the movie Alien. These guys had segmented bodies and they are actually the largest known arthropod to have ever existed here on earth. They had multiple specialized limbs and some of them even had spikes, like for example their 18 inch spiked claw that was used to snatch fish as they passed by. It is said that some of these guys would crawl out of the water in order to mate, and some sometimes shed their outer skin, and all I have to say is imagine finding an 8 foot long molt of one of these creatures on the beach right before you're about to jump in for a swim. You wouldn't, right? I'd swear off all water after that, not even drinking it anymore. In our number 5 spot today we have the goblin shark. A goblin shark is sometimes called a living fossil because the rest of the family that this type of shark belongs to have actually gone extinct. These sharks have pink skin and a long snout that sticks out really far, and these really creepy teeth that are like nails. When these sharks were first discovered by humans in 1910, the guy who was researching, um, the guy who was researching them wrote that the new shark is certainly grotesque and honestly Honestly, not much has changed since then, I'd definitely be inclined to agree. They usually grow to around 3 or 4 meters, which is 10 to 13 feet, but in 2000 there was one that was caught that was 6 meters or 20 feet long. These sharks tend to stay pretty deep in the ocean with the adults swimming even deeper than the young ones, so the good news about that is they probably aren't much of a threat to humans. In our number 4 spot today we have the Chronosaurus. This cretaceous marine reptile is one that had an elongated head a short neck, and a stiff body that was propelled by not just one, but two sets of fins that helped propel it through the water and through strong currents in order to capture whatever prey it was after. These guys were somewhere around 30 to 40 feet in length and they had many many long, sharp, conical teeth, with some of them being enlarged to be fangs. So. Yeah, I mean, what more could you want in a terrifying sea creature? Along with the fossils found of these guys, experts have been able to determine some of the stuff they ate, and it includes turtles, as well as other pliosaurs, which 
these guys are a part of that genus, meaning they basically ate their own family. I'm just saying, the Meg might have some stiff competition when it comes to these guys. In our number three spot today, we have stonefish. These fish are one of the most venomous known fish, and although they are primarily marine, some species are known to live in rivers as well. Most of these guys can be found in coral reefs near the tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans. The name of these fish comes from their camouflage color, which allows them to blend in with their surroundings, but unfortunately, because they are so good at disguising themselves, swimmers may not notice or see them and then inadvertently step on them, which can cause a whole slew of issues. When a stonefish is disturbed, it will inject an amount of venom proportional to the amount of pressure it's feeling, and this venom is coming from the glands at the base of their needle-like dorsal fin. The sting of a stonefish is said to be extremely painful, and if left untreated, it can certainly be fatal. The poison within the venom that the stonefish possesses is a proteinaceous toxin called verrucotoxin. The symptoms of this poison include respiratory weakness, damage to the cardiovascular system, convulsions and paralysis. Although there are many studies that have been done on this toxin, much about how it works and the exact mechanisms of it are not yet fully understood, which just places this already terrifying creature in a cloud of mystery. In our number two spot today, we have the Leviathan. If we were to look at our ocean today, we of course would see sharks as one of the top predators that exist. I mean, some sharks are huge and they certainly know how to hunt, but they aren't the only scary creatures roaming the oceans. Sometimes Killer whales make such a grand appearance that they even scare off some of the most terrifying sharks and make them flee for incredible distances. This is something that was also seen many, many years ago, I mean millions of years ago, during the time of the Megalodon, and that is thanks to a gigantic creature known as the Leviathan. If you are unfamiliar, this is a now extinct genus of macroraptorial sperm whale. It is believed that they could weigh around 100,000 pounds and reach up to 50 57 feet in length, and it's thought that their size is what helped repel other predators while helping them become the predator themselves. The Leviathan also had enormous teeth, teeth that reached over a foot in length, which is what gave them the title of largest bite of any tetrapod ever. In our number one spot today, we have the long arm squid. Listen, not all that terrifying, but they're just so creepy and gross. The big fin squid is not often seen, and thank goodness for that, because they are so unbelievable unbelievably freaky. They can be found in many different oceans, but they live in the permanently dark zone of the ocean, around 1,219 meters or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. On November 11, 2007, as an ROV was searching around the deep waters in the Gulf of Mexico, it was able to catch one of these guys on film. While there is still a ton that remains a mystery about these very elusive creatures, it is believed that they can grow to be around 23 feet long or over 7 meters. The real creepy stance that these guys have is when they hold their extremely long appendages perpendicular to their body, which creates like a sort of elbow look. I don't know, it just freaks me out. Imagine waking up and having a giant squid with elbows floating around your room. I know it's not gonna happen, but I'm just saying, that would be very scary. <laughs> Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the stargazer. These fish are absolute nightmare fuel, despite their nice little name. Their eyes are located on the tops of their heads, which is what gives them their name, but they have this strange little habit of burying themselves in the sand with only their face exposed before suddenly leaping out in order to catch their prey. These guys are also a venomous fish, and if this wasn't enough, there are some species which also have an electric organ. Because they have the ability to camouflage themselves and ambush predators and can deliver both venom and electric shocks, they have been called the meanest thing in creation. In our ninth spot today, we have the vampire squid. Vampire squids are considered a living relic. They are said to have evolved from an ancestor of the octopus. In fact, their lineage goes all the way back 165 million years ago. And that's probably why this creature resembles both a squid and octopus but are neither, it's confusing. This thing has eight arms and two tentacles. Its arms are lined with spines that are arranged in two rows. What's also unique about this creature is its color, which can change depending on where they are in the ocean. They also have the largest eyes in the entire animal kingdom, which is wild because they are massive in comparison to the size of their body. But don't be fooled by its name, okay? It doesn't go around sucking blood out of other sea creatures like vampires. In fact, it gets its name 
coming from its dark color and the skin that connects the arms kind of resemble a cape. In our eighth spot, we have the tadpole shrimp. These tiny little guys have been around for more than 200 million years, despite the fact that they are short lived. They typically only live for about two to four weeks, but they thrive for so long because of the fact that their eggs only hatch when the environmental conditions are favorable. In fact, the eggs are resistant to their environment and have been known to remain dormant for two decades. It's pretty wild, right? Now these guys are called the tadpole shrimp because of their distinctive body shape. They are shaped like an oval with a long forked tail. The tail can extend up to four inches in length. Not only that, but some of these guys may have up to 70 pairs of limbs, and that's a lot. Coming in at number seven, we have the sturgeon. Sturgeon are ancient fish that used to swim around when dinosaurs roamed the earth. In fact, they are about 200 million years old. Fun fact is that these bad boys have a long lifespan. In fact, some of them live to be about 100 years old. Now, what's weird is that the sturgeon, unlike every other fish, don't have scales. Instead, their skin is rubbery and only have a few rows of bony scoots. Another fun fact is that they can grow up to be over seven feet long and can weigh 300 pounds. Now, that is one big fish. Imagine swimming around in a lake and seeing this guy swim right by you. No thank you. New fear unlocked. Sadly, their population is dwindling, but there are a number of cities out there determined to protect their habitat. In our sixth spot, we have the horseshoe shrimp. Now this is considered a living fossil, and that's because it has hardly changed over the years. I mean, they've been around for 200 million years, and they still basically look the same. Now, they get their name because their body curves a bit like a horseshoe, but they're tiny. They're about 1.5 inches in length. Some species can grow bigger, others grow smaller. Now, these guys have no eyes, which baffles scientists because they would think that after all these years, they would evolve to have eyes. But no, nope, not at all. What else is interesting is that they are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female reproductive organs. You learn something new every day. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with SpongeBob SquarePants. And by SpongeBob, I mean a sponge. Now, what's interesting is that no one knows for sure how old the sponge is, but a rough estimate would be that they are at least 760 million years old, which then makes them the longest existing marine life species still around. Another fun fact is that a single sponge can live to be around 200 years old, meaning SpongeBob will surpass all his friends in age. That's a little sad, like he'll be alone while he watches all his friends die around him. Anyways, sponges also often use chemicals to determine her predators from eating them. Scientists have discovered that some of these chemicals may have potential to treat cancer and HIV, which is incredible. In our fourth spot today, we have the hagfish. Now, I personally hate these things, okay? They creep me the hell out. They literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and then eat them from the inside out. Okay, how is that not creepy? Not only that, but it secretes this slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of the attackers. Okay, they're so creepy and they've been around for 300 million years. In our third spot today, we have the walruses. Aren't these guys so silly and goofy looking? From fossil records, it's believed that walruses date back anywhere from 600,000 years to 14 million years ago. But the ones dating back millions of years ago were not quite like the modern walruses. They don't have the elongated upper canines, but you know, evolution is a thing. However, walruses are currently at risk. Due to climate change, they are losing stable sea ice to chill on, making it harder for them to hunt for food and such, and it's really sad. In our second spot, we have mud skippers. Now, these are pretty interesting creatures that have been around for over 350 million years, according to fossil records. They have the body of a tadpole, but a face of a frog or something. I don't know. So these things can reach around 2.75 to 9.7 inches in length. They are usually an olive brown color 
color. However, some species are covered with blue markings. They also have protruding eyes, two pectoral fins, and two dorsal fins. The freakiest thing about them is that they can move their eyes around independently from each other. As in, one eye can be looking up while the other is looking down. It's kind of cool, but it's also kind of weird. Like, imagine if humans could do that. That would be wild. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Although these guys look intimidating, they aren't. In fact, they are often referred to as gentle giants. They are huge, but not really aggressive. They can grow to be up to 12 meters long. In fact, they are declared the world's largest fish. A reason why they get the reputation of being gentle giants is because they are filter feeders. They can neither bite nor chew, but they can process more than 6,000 liters of water an hour through their gills. Now, its mouth can stretch to four feet wide, but their teeth are so tiny that they can only eat small shrimp, fish, and plankton by using their gill rakers as a suction filter. Not only that, but less than 10% of whale sharks born survive adulthood, which is sad. But those that do can live to be 150 years of age, which is surprising since they have been around anywhere from 245 to 65 million years ago. Number 10. The sea spider. If you're like me and you don't like spiders living on land, well, I have some delightful news for you. They also live in the ocean. There are even giant ones that suck out the lives of their prey. Yup, they latch onto their prey for dear life and suck out any and all fluids they can get their hands on. Yay! Their leg spans are about the same as one of the largest spiders on land, such as the Goliath bird-eating tarantula. I should say they are technically not spiders, the main difference being that they carry their organs in their legs. In fact, they are almost all legs. Though they aren't very dangerous to humans, especially considering they live so far beneath the waves, they would definitely still send a chill down my spine. Thankfully, they reside in cold climate waters, mainly Antarctica. In our ninth spot today, we have Nautilus. This is an ancient mollusk that has been around for 500 million years. In fact, they have been around before Pangaea was even fully formed. Now, originally there were 10,000 different species, but now only a few are left and are at risk of extinction. That's because of us. We are over harvesting them, and on top of that, they are slow at reproducing. They need to be left alone right now because they run the risk of extinction. It's kind of sad once you think about it. Like they survived for hundreds of millions of years and only now start to die thanks to humans. Coming in at number eight, we have the horseshoe crab. Now what's trippy is that despite their name, they are not crabs. In fact, they are more closely related to spiders or scorpions. Isn't that weird? Now these bad boys are considered one of evolution's ultimate survivors. That's because they date back to 450 million years, meaning they survived five mass extinctions. Now these guys can grow anywhere from 18 to 19 inches from head to tail. Males grow a little less in size, only being 14 to 15 inches. Still, that's pretty big. The horseshoe crab consists of three parts. They got a front shell, a back shell, and a tail. Now, you may be looking at this tail and you're like, whoa, what the hell? No, 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 that thing can sting me and then kill me. False, horseshoe crabs, although creepy looking, are harmless, but they do have eyes everywhere. They have 10 in total and that freaks me out. In our seventh spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now, if you've seen my other video on sea creatures, then you know how much I hate this guy. It literally gives me the creeps, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, the goblin shark has actually been declared a living fossil, and that's due to the fact that it was thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891, when a goblin shark was spotted off the coast of Japan. Researchers realized that the shark was indeed still alive. And in fact, it barely changed over time, hence why it's considered a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now, these things have the creepiest looking appearance hence why I'm not the biggest fan of them. Plus, they have this weird ligament thing in their jaw that makes it so that they can extend their mouth out and snatch up their prey. Plus, their mouths launch out really fast. That's also why its mouth area just looks so creepy. In our sixth spot today, we have the lamprey. Has anyone here watched a series of unfortunate events? You know, the movie with Jim Carrey, not the TV show. Well, you know that scene where they're on the lake and the giant leeches start attacking their boat? Well, lamprey 
look exactly like those giant leeches. These things look like they're a mix between a snake, an eel, and a leech. They can be anywhere from 5 to 40 inches in length, and they attack fish by sucking the life out of them. They're literally like a vampire. Now wait until you see their mouth. They have 11 or 12 rows of teeth that wrap around in their mouth like a ring. And once they latch onto their victim, they use a barbed tongue to pierce the fish and then just drain the blood out of them. They also excrete a blood thinner to prevent blood clotting. What's crazy is that these creatures have survived four major extinctions in their 360 million year existence. That is wild. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the frilled shark. Now this is another pretty creepy looking shark. In fact, it doesn't even look like a shark. It looks like an eel mixed with a snake mixed with a shark. But fun fact, these sharks are actually the cousins of the great white shark and the hammerhead shark. Now these bad boys have been around for 80 million years. Pretty insane, right? They live in the dark abyss of the deep sea and have rarely changed over the years. Now they were given the name of the frilled shark because because of the frilly appearance of their gills. They also are kind of similar to snakes because they have hinged jaws that allow them to eat big creatures whole. But you don't need to worry, okay? They live deep in the ocean and they don't really show themselves to humans. In our fourth spot today, we have the Wabagong shark. Again, another shark that doesn't really look like a shark. And that's because this shark has camouflage techniques and it likes to blend in with algae covered rocks or the ocean floor. And they do a good job with it too, with their flattened bodies and speckled patterns on their bodies. Now these dudes have been around since 11 million years ago. But don't worry, these sharks don't attack. They'll leave you alone if you leave them alone. The only time they have attacked is when a diver got too close or someone accidentally stepped on one. But no fatalities have ever been reported. In our third spot, we have the Greenland shark. This shark is said to be one of the longest lived vertebrae animals. The shark is also said to be one of the world's largest carnivores and one of the most successful predators in the Arctic waters. These massive sharks are about the same size as a great white shark and eat crustaceans along with things that have fallen off of the ice shelf above. Also, apparently, these creepy worm-like parasites like to attach themselves to these sharks' eyes and literally eat their eyes out, okay? I think that's scarier than the shark itself. But yeah, the Greenland shark is still alive today. They live for at least 250 years. One of them lived for 400 years. Some may live to be 500. Isn't that crazy? For reference, a great white shark lives for only 70 years. So they got nothing on the Greenland sharks. Coming in at number two, we have a pygmy right whale. Now, these whales have been around for about 23 million years. In fact, they are considered one of the rarest species of whales. Around 2 million years ago, they were thought to have gone extinct. That was until 2012 when they were rediscovered. Besides that mystery, there's another one, which is scientists don't know where exactly this whale evolved from. There's been much debate over this for a while. What we do know though is that these whales like cool waters, which is what puts them at risk because of climate change. Scientists are worried the rising ocean temperatures will wipe them out for good. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Here's another name that does not match the creature because this animal is not a whale at all. It's not even a whale shark hybrid. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is the largest shark and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 26 million years. However, now they are endangered. Now when you think of sharks, you think that they love to eat fish and if they get a whiff of blood, they'll just go crazy. Well. Whale sharks aren't like that at all. In fact, they are filter feeders, meaning they eat plankton, fish eggs, decaying plants, etc. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, an aquarium. Starting off this countdown in no order, we have the Mosasaurus. This sea creature was alive back during the Cretaceous period, which was 145 to 65 million years ago. It was a massive aquatic lizard that grew to around 58 to 59 feet. In fact, they were at the top of the food chain eating everything beneath them. This included sharks, reptiles, and even other Mosasaurus. Yes, they feasted on their own kind. Fossilized remains of this beast were first discovered in the 1700s in the Netherlands. From there, they learned that it inhabited the Atlantic Ocean and adjacent seaways. Fossils have been discovered all around the world though, in North America, South America, Africa, Western Asia, and Antarctica. 
In our number nine spot today, we have the flying spaghetti monster. I know it sounds silly, but I swear this creature really does exist. This deep sea creature is a species of siphonophore that can usually be found in the Atlantic Ocean. While these guys appear to be one organism, they're actually a colonial organism, which means that they're composed of many, many medusoids and polypoid zooids. Zooids are multicellular units that develop from one single fertilized egg, and they combine to create functional colonies like the flying spaghetti. Spaghetti monster. In our number eight spot today, we have the wolf trap anglerfish. This is a species of anglerfish that is usually found in the deep waters just off of the coast of Mexico. While all anglerfish look pretty strange, these guys just might take the cake on the weirdest looking fish in the angler family. These guys were actually discovered quite recently, only a few years ago, and this, coupled with their deep sea habitat, means that a lot of information about them remains a mystery just waiting to be uncovered. Like other anglerfish, these guys also have the bioluminescent lure that is used for attracting prey. In our number seven spot today, we have the Pacific Viper Fish. The Pacific Viper Fish can be found at different areas in the ocean depending on the time of day. They usually like to stay in the bathal zone, which is about 1,000 meters to 4,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, but during the nighttime, they will sometimes rise up into much shallower water because there is more food for them to eat. It's easy to pick out which fish is a viper fish because of the fact that its jaw is sticking out forward, and then it has those extra long points. Teeth. The Pacific viper fish is predatory and mostly eats other fish, but will also chow down on crustaceans, plankton, and shrimp. This fish can grow to be about one foot long and are considered one of the most aggressive fish for its size. I know it's only one foot long, but hearing how vicious it is coupled with how ugly it is, and I really just don't want to be anywhere near this thing. One cool thing about this fish though is that they have what is called ultra black skin and it reduces the reflection of anything that is illuminated around them so that they can camouflage themselves easier in the darkness of the deep sea. In our number six spot today, we have the sea spider. Okay. If you're like me and don't like the spiders that exist on land, unfortunately, this one isn't gonna be up your alley. Sea spiders are giant and they like to suck the life out of their prey. Yeah, how terrifying and honestly gross. They basically just latch onto their prey for dear life and suck out all the fluid they possibly can. They are gross, but they technically aren't actually spiders. These guys have a leg span that is comparable to some of the largest land spiders, but the things with these guys is that they carry their organs in their legs because, I mean, they're basically all legs. The good news is that they prefer really cold temperatures like the ones in the waters surrounding Antarctica. In our number five spot today, we have the Atlantic wolffish. Okay, these guys are named due to their teeth, and honestly, you can totally understand why. On both the upper and lower jaw, they have six sharp and strong teeth that honestly would freak anyone out. Because of how strong their teeth are, they tend to eat hard shell creatures like crustaceans and mollusks, and they also are important to keeping the sea urchin and green crab population in check. The wolffish like to stay mostly in one area and tend to live in near freezing temperatures. They have a very cool feature though. Because they live in such cold temperatures, they have what is basically just antifreeze running through their bodies so that they don't freeze up. Even though they look super creepy, I have to admit that is pretty sweet. In our number four spot today, we have the fang tooth fish. The fang tooth fish has a mouth full of razor sharp teeth, perfect for clutching just about any size of prey in its jaw. That's right, any, any size. They live in the deepest parts of the ocean, the deepest having been recorded at about 16,000 feet. That is, until they just so happen to feel like migrating up to the surface for a little vacation. Unlike a lot of other deep sea dwellers, fang tooths do not have any bioluminescent organs to attract their prey. But that is because they're not the sit and wait kind of predator and instead they seek out their meal using their excellent sense of smell. They're more active than most deep sea dwellers and heavily rely on any light that may seep into their dark home. In our number three spot today, we have the deep sea lizard fish. Deep sea lizard fish are a small family of deep water fish who are related to the telescope fish. These guys have flat heads and curved barbed teeth and they grow to about 78 centimeters or 31 inches in length. which makes them a pretty moderately sized fish. They prefer to stay at depths of 1,600 meters or 5,200 feet, and they are actually one of the world's deepest living apex predators. These lizard fish are known to eat anything that comes their way, including other fish of their own kind. That's messed up. Despite the lack of light in the depths of the ocean, these guys have large eyes and pupils, and their vision is actually really important for their prey detection, as well as their well-developed eyes that allow them to see any resistance 
residual or bioluminescent light. Not a lot is known about the reproduction habits, but one thing that is known is that the deep sea lizard fish have both male and female reproductive organs, which is thought to be an adaptation to low population density. In our number two spot today, we have the faceless tusk eel. Anything that's called faceless certainly can't be good and this eel is absolutely no exception. These guys, they don't have a face and they honestly look like the dementors of the deep sea. The first time one of these was found was in 1873 when oceanographers aboard the HMS Challenger discovered it, but for a century no one else really came across one of these guys. Perhaps it's because they like to make their home in the icy waters located about 13,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Just a few years ago when these guys were sort of rediscovered, one of the leaders of the expedition, Tim O'Hara, told the Guardian that quote, it looks like two rear ends on a fish, really. Apparently the mouth of these guys sits underneath its body and can extend out to catch food before disappearing back inside its own body. So that's kind of gross, kind of cool. In our number one spot today we have the hagfish. There are about 76 different species of hagfish and some of them are known to live as deep as 5,500 feet below the surface of the ocean. While the hagfish isn't particularly the best name, they are also known by an equally disgusting name of slime eels, and this is because their body produces a sort of goop that is used to ward off predators. This slime that they release has recently been found to impair the function of a predator's gills, so it seems as though it's a pretty effective shield. Aside from this defense mechanism, if their slime doesn't work and they find themselves still caught in the grasp of a predator, they can sort of tie themselves into a knot in order to escape the clutches. Starting off this countdown, we have the sea jellies. Sea jellies, or jellyfish, have been around since over 500 million years ago. A reason being is that they are highly adaptable when it comes to change, whereas other animals might die off easily when put in more intense situations. Not only that, but jellyfish thrive in areas of water with depleted oxygen, otherwise known as dead zones, and they thrive in warmer temperatures. Their predators, on the other hand, like sea turtles, fish, and sharks, struggle in these environments. So they're just out there thriving and reproducing. In our number nine spot today, we have the sarcastic fringe head. The sarcastic fringe head is a saltwater fish that is fairly small. They're around 30 centimeters long and are fairly slender with very large mouths. They're pretty aggressive fish and they are very territorial. When they fight other fish, they press their mouths together and that's how they can tell who the bigger fish is and the bigger fish just automatically wins the fight. These things honestly look like they shouldn't even exist. These fish like to make their homes in shells or small crevices, and they have even been found to be living inside of humans littered soda cans. Luckily, they are so small, they aren't really a threat to humans, but they are just so creepy to look at. Number eight, I love this name. Gulper eels. Gulper eels or pelican eels is another aptly named creature as it's known for its massive balloon jaws. They are black in color and can usually reach around two to three feet in size or sometimes double that and live anywhere between 10,000 to 16,000 feet beneath the surface. Unlike the fang tooth, however, it does have a little bioluminescent spot on its tail to help lure prey so it can open up its jaw and swallow them whole. They also have really small teeth, so they kind of have to. Gulper eels can inflate their jaw and stomach to almost two thirds the length of their body so they can consume prey larger than their body, hence the name Gulper eels. That's a great name. That's terrifying though. Their primary source of food, however, mainly consists of crabs and shrimp and other small creatures. So if they don't thirst after humans, I shouldn't be scared, right? Wrong. What if they get tired of small game and realize the power that they are capable of? Just saying. In our number seven spot today, we have the Atlantic wolf fish. Okay, these guys are named due to their teeth, and honestly, you can totally understand why. On both the upper and lower jaw, they have like six sharp and strong teeth that honestly freak me out. Because of how strong their teeth are, they tend to eat hard shell creatures like crustaceans and mollusks, and they are also important to keeping the sea urchin and green crab population in check. The wolf fish like to stay mostly in one area 
area and tend to live in near freezing temperatures. They have such a cool feature though. Because they live in such cold temperatures, they have what is basically just antifreeze running through their bodies so that they don't freeze up. Even though they look super creepy, I do have to admit that that is pretty cool. Unfortunately, these guys have a population that is quickly declining, largely due to being accidentally caught by those who are overfishing. The good news is that they are only a species of concern at the moment, which does mean that there is still time to turn it all around. Number six, the Northern Stargazer. While the Northern Stargazer sounds like a very romantic name for someone who heads north to check out the Northern Lights, nope, we're talking about this guy. This deep sea creature lives in the dark open waters of the Chesapeake Bay, a region in Maryland, USA, where salt and freshwater mix. Stargazers have a flattened black and brown body with white spots along its back. This compressed exterior is perfect for the way they bury themselves beneath the sand with just enough for their mouths and eyes to be exposed so they can keep an eye on food. Once something tasty catches its eye, it opens up its mouth, creating a vacuum and sucks it down like a little snack. Its mouth faces upwards towards the top of its head and its eyes sit right on top so it can look straight up at the stars. Now the name seems clever. Look, they don't eat humans, they eat mainly little fish and crustaceans. They're pretty harmless. We should leave them alone, but imagine just for a second you're scuba diving and all of a sudden you just see this staring up at you. That's enough to give you nightmares. In our number five spot today, we have the Pacific Viperfish. The Pacific Viperfish can be found at different areas in the ocean depending on the time of day. They usually like to stay in the bathyal zone, which is 1,000 meters to 4,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, but at nighttime, they will sometimes rise up into much more shallow water because there is more food for them to eat. It's easy to pick out which fish is a viper fish because of the fact that its jaw is sticking out forward and then it has those extra long pointy teeth. The Pacific viper fish is predatory and mostly eats other fish, but will also chow down on crustaceans, plankton, and shrimp. The fish can grow to be about one foot long and are considered one of the most aggressive fish for its size. I know it's only one foot long, but hearing how vicious it is, coupled with how ugly it is, I really just don't ever want to be anywhere near this thing. One cool thing about these fish though is that they have what is called ultra black skin and it reduces the reflection of anything that is illuminated around them so that they can camouflage themselves easier in the darkness of the deep sea. Number four, uh, the fang tooth fish. Yup, you heard that right. Yes, is it, it is exactly as it sounds. The fang tooth fish has a mouth full of razor sharp teeth perfect for clutching just about any size of prey in its jaw. That's right, any. Any size. But it's fine, it's fine. They live in the deepest parts of the ocean, the deepest having me recorded at around 16,000 feet. That is until they just so happen to feel like migrating up to the surface for a little vacation. Unlike a lot of other deep sea dwellers, fangtooths do not have any bioluminescent organs to attract their prey. That is because they're out the sit and wait kind of predator and instead seek out their lunch using their excellent sense of smell. They are more active than most deep sea dwellers and heavily rely on any light that may seep into the dark home. But oh, I should also mention they're also only seven inches long and not dangerous at all to humans, we think. Tiny but mighty, as they say. In our number three spot today, we have the goblin shark. A goblin shark is sometimes called a living fossil because the rest of the family that this type of shark belongs to have actually all gone extinct. Not like it's mom and dad kind of family, but the family that this species belongs to. These sharks have pink skin and a long snout that sticks out really far, and these really creepy teeth that are like nails. When these sharks were first discovered by humans in 1910, the guy who was researching them wrote that this shark is certainly grotesque. They usually grow to be around three or four meters, which is 10 to 13 feet, but in 2000, there was one that was caught that was six meters or 20 feet long. These sharks tend to stay pretty deep in the ocean with the adults swimming even deeper than the young ones, so they don't tend to be a threat to our ways of life, thank goodness. Coming in at number two, we have the anglerfish. If you were wondering what the heck that big ugly fish was in the clip at the beginning of this video, that would be the anglerfish. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. 
There are different kinds of anglerfish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to 5.5 inches. An anglerfish is able to eat prey that is the same size as itself. That's crazy, luckily. Most anglerfish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not so quite deep in the oceans, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. So there. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. If you like this video so far, let us know by pressing that thumbs up button and be sure to follow to stay up to date on our channel. Now it's time for number one. In our number one spot today, we have the Colossal Squid. This one already sounds like a horror movie ready to stand beside the likes of Jaws, Godzilla, and King Kong. The Colossal Squid is a real creature that lives in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. This creature lives up to its name as it reaches an average of 46 feet in size and weighs around 500 kilograms. I'm 5'5", so if it decided to eat me, it could fit eight of me in side of its stomach or more if I was in pieces. Anyways, they also have large tentacles equipped with suckers that have little razor hooks on them to better latch onto its prey, and let's just hope that its prey isn't you. Its diet mainly consists of large fish such as the seven foot Patagonian toothfish and small ones, and even consumes their own kind. But they've also been known to try and consume larger prey like sperm whales, who often have been seen with scars attributing to their battles they must have faced. If you do decide to provoke one however, make sure it's not female. Apparently they're the larger ones. So to conclude, they're colossal, scary, and ambitious. What more could you want from a sea monster? At least now, if you ever wondered where the tales of the Kraken came from, you now know. Mm -hmm.